Hello, I'm just seeing if anybody can see my screen. It's showing up black, so I'm concerned about that. Uh, just type in the chat. Just let me know if you can't see anything. Hopefully everyone can see my painting and my supplies. Okay, can, I don't see anybody, oh wait, um, yeah, hi, welcome in Joanna. Are you guys able to see everything? Okay, well, there must be a glitch with YouTube because I see black, so I can't actually see what I'm doing, <laughs> um, super weird. I'm just gonna be safe and pull my camera up a bit higher just in case, hopefully you can see it all. Um, all right, let's do this. So I have a black canvas here, it's an eight by 10. And I have my, I reuse my paint palettes. I have my black, white, uh, primary yellow, or you can use warm yellow, a uh, phthalo blue or primary blue, and bright red, which is non-orange red. It's just a primary red, mostly kind of slightly pinkish. So this is going to stay up forever. You can watch it anytime. You could pause it as well. And hope you enjoy. All right, so for this one, this one I had fun with just kind of playing around, doing whatever I wanted. I, if you want to start with the ruler, you can, but I just, I just made some sort of bookshelf or bookcase here. And then you can, since it's black in the background, you can just erase anything and make adjustments as you go. So I'm going to start with what I have as a medium round brush. You can also use a flat. I'm going to pull yellow and red about equal parts. Then I'm taking a little dip of black because I'm starting with a bit of a brown bookshelf. And a little bit of white because on top of black, it's a little bit harder to see. And once you have a brown, you can always add a bit more yellow or red depending on what you prefer. If you like it a bit warmer, more reddish, add a touch more red. Kind of looks a bit more like mahogany. All right, so I'm just gonna go upwards. I'm leaving a little bit of space for those flowers that I wanna put around it. And somewhere up here. Just a rectangle. And I just make it a little bit thicker because I can always make adjustments. Okay, there we go. To fill it in the middle, 
I'm just adding a big scoop of white to a small section of my brown. Yeah, you can use either a touch more red or yellow. I want a bit more yellowy into the same spot and you can just fill it in. So just go up and down and then you can be more precise with the thickness of just the trim of your bookcase. So I'm just being kind of careful around the inner parts. Making another rectangle pretty parallel to that original line that I used or I made for it. And just getting some more paint. Also, I kind of like it a little bit rustic. So even if you're mixing a new color or you're doing in some different browns here, go for it. You can even mix a little bit more brown in or more white and yellow. Small touch of water, grabbing a bit more paint. And just keep in mind, I cannot see what my camera sees. Usually I can see what's going on, but I'm just trusting that it's showing you what you need to see, unless somebody says something. Touch water. Get more paint. So I filled that in, any touch-ups you need to do, like black to trim around the edges or with a little bit more dark brown. So remember that brown we started with, you can just touch it up. It's probably good to use a more straight edge brush And I let that sit before I do any, any like shadows. Um, oh, yes, I'm going to use the same sort of brown. You can always go a touch lighter. I'm just gonna go across, but I'm gonna use my flat brush. Touch of water, maybe this one a little bit big. I think I'll use something like this is good. Grabbing a bit more yellow, red, touch of black, and some white. Similar to what I did for the outline. Okay, and just go across. Hopefully, I'm not doing it too much on an angle. Yeah, let's do one more here. So I just do little cleanups just on the sides, making sure it goes right to the very edge. Looks a bit more complete too. There. So while I wait for that to dry, I just go back with a little bit of my black. 
that little cleanup just to give it more of a sharp look. And I'm also going to take a little bit of this black in just a just another minute, just to go around the inner part. So I'm going to go along the edges within the brown frame and the bottoms of the the shells. You can do a little bit on the top too. A touch of water. And I like the straight, flat edge. If you go on top of the line that you've made, it looks like it's a little bit thinner. If you go underneath everything you put for the brown, it looks a little bit thicker. Here, give it a bit of extra shadow. Probably do a little touch up at the end as well. Touching up on this line, I think it was a little bit wonky painting, tiny bit on an angle. Right. So from here, you can always wait for it to dry. I'm just waiting for it to dry just a smidge. Doing a bit of the trim is okay because we're not really touching that. This is just a fine detailed brush. Stuff and things that you can do at the end, even with a Sharpie. All right, so whenever you're ready, um, I just start adding in placement for my books and I add in fun little things in between. I'm gonna start from the top. I think I'm gonna stick with this flat brush here. Yeah, it's about a number four.
In terms of picking colors, since my bookshelf is pretty brown, I'm not picking too much of the same color, but we can make some fun colors. You can always add a touch of brown to everything to just muddy it up or give it a bit of an earthy, muted tone. So like blue and a bit of white to a touch of brown kind of goes out a little bit teal, but more, more muted and not as vibrant. So just to show, for example, this is actually really bright, but let's just go with it. Because it doesn't matter what you want to do in terms of color or even just placement. And I'm just trying, I'm trying to, unless you're doing like a theme, I'm trying to change it up all the time. Touch of black, touch of red, do something completely opposite. It goes a bit dark purpley. I'm going to do a shorter one. I think I'll add a touch of white to that. Kind of go a bit grayish. Sometimes if you use the full width of your brush, you can get a perfect rectangle. And I'll add a touch of blue again, go more blue, and some yellow. Just unique colors. So what I'll do is I'll just do a slanted sideways one. You just want to press and go up. You don't want it to like bend too much with the books unless I'm imagining these to be hard covers. I just like hard covers, but you can also do sort of bended ones. I'll wash that off. Maybe I'll add in some brown looking ones. So into my brown, I'll probably just take a bit more red, go some more red brown. Maybe a touch of blue. More purpley brown. So I'll do the one that's on the bottom. I'm just going to do one right here. And books can be different. You know, sometimes they can be a little bit bigger. So maybe I'll just make this one a little bit thicker. a little bit thicker and then I'll just add some more white into this and black a little bit more gray so in the same brown I just added more white and black to go slightly more grayish so what I did is I went a little bit outside which is sitting on top And you can see a bit of the paper too, which is kind of fun. If you take a bit of white paint, all I did was I just extended it and kind of flicked it outwards. Give it that loose papery feel just outside of the end of where the, the spine of the book kind of ends. And you can take black so just a little bit of black with a touch of water try not to overdo it on your super detailed brush so for example i'm just doing a little bit of a, a curve here or a line going upwards so it looks like it's binding the papers just on the top and bottom and then from there just an extra little bit of shadow from that line and then just letting it kind of taper off not much over there so a little bit more right over here and i think the outlining does a lot for the books and your outlining too can be 
you don't even have to pick the same colors. Like they can be black, they can be gray, they can be brownish, they can be darker versions of whatever you've made. So for this gray one, maybe you just want to do a bit of like a, a dark gray to black outline. And it just adds a bit more shadow between the books too. Maybe a little bit of a roundness here on the end. Okay. So I'll do maybe a dark brown. You're just adding black to any brown. It's almost black. You can do a bit of an outline on this one. Just along the bottom. It's not overlapping too much on the shelf. And it really depends on how much work you want to put into this. So you you don't always have to use your super fine detailed brush, but I like to use it for the outlines. But you can, while after you do a couple books, you can always just take very little amount of white and just kind of dry brush into the middle of your books. And it kind of just goes a little bit lighter same color but a little bit lighter and it gives it that highlight so I'll wash it off and I'll do it again for these guys they're probably still a bit damp so a little bit of white and just go up the middle dry brush it if it's still really wet it probably just blends right in so you have to be careful you have to know how much white you want to put but the more I go over it the more it just goes back to that teal just go up the middle a bit there. Okay. Take a little bit of white, go up the middle of these. And then this one. Maybe this one too, although that one's already pretty light. But I'll give it a bit of a just a bit of a shadow. So when in doubt, just use black. I'm just going to use, maybe I'll just take some black and blue, do a super dark blue. I'll go on this one. A little more. Now it just gives it a little extra shadow. A little touch of yellow to this. Give it a slightly more greenish, dark green look for the teal one, maybe. Give it some shadow at the bottom and a bit on the very edge, right to next to the edge of the bookcase. Maybe just a little extra black. Personally, I like to just take this black and kind of go around the bottoms of these books. It looks like it's a bit more grounded, um, like sitting on the shelf a little bit better. And there, there's a bit more of a separation between all of these books. So I'm going to go up in between here. I find that touches of water really go a long way. Okay, hopefully it's looking okay because I can't see in the camera, but you know, from here, it's, I think it's not too bad. <laughs> not too bad. Okay, so that's one layer of books. I'm definitely adding like the coffee or teacup probably later. I'm going to do some books down here. 
put a plant in between, do some books. Like I did a volume down here. Could be like an encyclopedia or one of your favorite trilogies or something like that. All right, so going back in here, I did a like a brown purple mauve combo. So to give it the first brown that I made, if anybody really cares to make the same brown, but yellow, touch of red, so mostly yellow. It's kind of like a yellowy orange or, yeah, yellowy orange or just slightly orange color. Touch of white and a tiny dot of black. You have to be careful. Too much black, it will, it will kind of just go really gray and quite dark. There, it's like a yellow ochre. So if you have yellow ochre or some sort of gold, perfect. Okay, so I did it in a stack. I started somewhere over here. Yeah, this looks exactly like gold or yellow ochre. Just did. I'm gonna do some thicker ones because this section I did a lot bigger than the other section. So I'm just gonna go a little bit bigger. Now I'm going to add more red, touch of black, another scoop of red, touch of black, and another dot of black. A bit more red. Black and red surprisingly go a little bit purpley. So more red and black gives it that extra purple sort of tinge. I'm just going a little bit outside this yellow one. Washing it off, I'm going to straight purple. Pops of vibrancy and color is nice. Mostly red, touch of blue, and white to your liking. So it's, this one's like lavender. I think it's nice. So it's a little extra red than blue because blue is darker. It will take over pretty quickly. And we'll go back to a dark purple so that blue and red, more of that added together to go to more of a violet. If you want to add black, you can. And just give it more of an outline on the edges. I like to just use black to outline a lot of these towards the end anyways for extra crisp, sharp look. Okay, and then I had a book facing the other way, kind of fun. Just another brown, dark brown, similar to this brown that I did around the edge. So about equal parts, yellow and red, touch of black, Touch white. This is coming out pretty much to the edge. 
Yes. Washed it off. Take a little bit of white, maybe a touch of black, so it's the paper is not perfectly white. Maybe it's been well read. And mine was just slightly opened a bit, so I just fanned it out. So more flat at the bottom, and then slightly open, fanned out. I'm just flicking it out, very kind of feathery. And you'll want to go back to your dark brown to just go above the last page you made. And then what I did is I just brought it down a little bit on an angle. So from there, just brought it down a little bit on an angle and then connected it. So it's like, if you look at it, it's, um, it's like almost like a, a rhombus, like a sideways rhombus. a little bit of black so you can distinguish where the spine begins and where the front of the page the book starts as well there's just black outlining those major parts you just kind of fill it in So I can go back, take some black or dark brown. Just go around from the beginning because it's a little bit dry, but not too dry. It kind of mixes with it a little bit. So the black is probably a bit more forgiving when you blend it in, if you need to blend it in. extra shadow just coming from the spine where the pages are all fanning out and then leave the ends a bit more white. Something else kind of fun for that lightly just dry brush some white. While it's a little bit damp it just goes to a lighter version of what you've made. You'll see the more I go over the white, the more it blends back in because it's still wet. If you did this when it was dry, probably not so much. Okay, so those books are pretty much done. Just a thin black outline on the top part of the thickness of the bookshelves.
All right, so I'm switching back to that flat number four. I am going to put a plant here. Maybe you'll want to put the plant first. I don't know. This uh, it just kind of fit it in between where the books were. I just wanted to put something in between. Plants are nice. I like snake plants. That's kind of what I was doing here, a snake plant. Or it could be you can do more of a um, string of pearls because I try to do something like that here. I'm going to use, oh, if you have like a bronze, you can make it more shiny by doing a bronze um, pot holder. But to make it look slightly bronze, in it's actually very similar to making a red brown, pretty much the same. So it's mostly, it's about equal parts red and yellow, touch extra red, dot of black, and maybe a small touch of white, maybe two touches. So if you take too much black, it's going to, it's not going to show the red brown. And a touch more yellow if it's a bit too reddish. Touch more white if you want to go a little bit lighter. Okay. This is fine. I don't need to make it exact. I did at the bottom here. And I kind of wanted to just put a line going up. Okay, this is like the center where it's going to go. Then just a short little line at the bottom and it just kind of fans out on each side. Try to make it equal and even. Fill it in all one color to start. Probably should have used a bit of a smaller brush, but it's okay. Going to my small brush just to make it more defined. And I'm just taking black, so I haven't washed it off. I'm just taking black and I'm going to darken the bottom and the sides with a bit of an outline. So I'm just filling it in kind of rough and choppy, so almost like a cross hatch, seeing what comes of it. And just letting some of that bronze color still show. And it gives it extra texture. Kind of cool. You can give it a bit of a highlight. So you add a touch more white to your bronzy color. Or you can take your bronze and just add white. So if you have a metallic color, you're just kind of going in between on top of some of the lighter spots. Looks a little bit shiny here and there, I think. Pure white will give it extra shine. So if you want it super shiny, you can just do a streak of actual white. And some spots where you want it to be extra shiny. That's That can be dangerous stuff because then it goes a little bit too crazy. You can use your finger to kind of just blend it in just a smidge if needed. Okay, so I'm just taking my black again to really shadow the top because I think it's going to add extra shadow for my plant. Before I do the plant, I do want to do the other book so my plant can just kind of go over wherever it wants to go. Okay, so for, all right, so I'm going to take that flat one again. 
notebooks on the side. Don't need color. I'm just gonna. Sometimes, if you're not sure what you should do, just take some dirty white, contaminated white, touching whatever color, maybe like brown. That's fine. Here, pretty close, right up close. So this one, I'm going to do tall book. And add a touch of black. Do one that's sitting right on the side. Can be slightly taller, the same height. Same, it's all a rinse and repeat. So I'm just going to take the black, do the shadow in between them, outline a bit at the bottoms. Do a bit of that white highlight down the middle of the spines. And then, in just a minute, I'm going to make my snake plant. That's it. So in terms of, I'd probably just use another small one, but like a number two or four, nothing too tiny. And in terms of the green, I'm not doing a super vibrant green. I'm going to take, I'm adding a bit of brown to a green. So let's hear some brown. I'm going to add yellow, big scoop of yellow. It's already greenish. And a touch of blue, just a small touch. More brown will give it more of a browny green, very earthy. Uh, more blue, so if I add a bit more blue, it goes a bit tealish. And you know, for a snake plant, I think that might be correct. Or it depends on the, I guess it depends. Maybe I'm thinking of more of those succulent aloe veras. But anyways, pick a color you like. You can even do a couple of them. Uh, okay, so from the plant, I'm just gonna do whatever. I'm just gonna flick it out and just kind of let it do its thing. Overlap is nice. And have, they tend to have like these long, thin leaves. And go up, and oh, it's going to hit the top and just kind of fold over, sure. There's a lot of overlap, maybe nothing too the same, so it's not like you have the same amount on each side. There we go, and I'm going to take a touch of black, 
and just go from the bottom. So I'm just kind of flicking it, going from the bottom, let it go toward each side. And I'm going to let that sit, come back to it a bit later. Do a little bit of a highlight. You can do extra outlining and shadows. But at the bottom, what I've done is I made this, uh, this row of books here, all of the same type. Um, in terms of color, I don't even know. I'm just going to do like brownish. Yeah, say yellowy brown. Kind of like yellow ochre again. Okay, so I'm gonna do, so I have a jar right here. So I'm just gonna do this, have it go and end right about here. The good thing about this too, fill it in. Just gonna go up and down, fill it in. When I separate them, I can always extend to make it longer. So I'm taking black. I'm going to separate them into however many books I can fit, really. So I'm going to go say, right here and just make sure it's all looking like it's one unit. Okay, pretty much the perfect length. Awesome. So from here, I kind of added in some extra brown shadows, whatever. You can do bronze, you can do any brown. I just picked up the brown that I had before, which was basically this bronze. Just went along and just sort of filled in for the most part a lot of this book to give it this multi-layered look. Very, I guess, kind of antique-ish looking. It's got a bit of that bold look too, which is why it looks a bit antique and interesting, kind of fun. Yeah, so you still see a little bit of that like gold stuff around. After, just a bit of black, just to go through the middles again. Okay. So I'm going back to my plant, taking a bit of black. Now it's a bit more dry. Um, maybe I'll have like this leaf overlapping this leaf. I'm just picking leaves here. So it looks like there's more of a 
each leaf, you can sort of see a bit more. And then I will give it a highlight. So brush that off and take some white added to your green. Just a much lighter green, the same color about that, yeah. Um, and give it a highlight. Almost like just go along the tops and then bring it down a bit until it goes to that dark color again. Over blend, I think the more it starts, I don't know, I'm just, I think it looks a bit like a snake plant like this because it's very, um, it's got like these streaks of color. I think that's, yeah, I think I'm just going to leave that, not really touch that too much. Oh, I know why I made this one lighter, it's because you can see the book the other way. <laughs> I see, I see what I did. But not something you really have to do. You can just do streaks of white in there and then some light gray, a touch of water, a darker gray. That makes it look like the book is facing other direction. Oh well, okay. that's, that's fine. I'm just gonna leave that how that is. And the jar is at the bottom. Kind of fun. Maybe a not so small brush. I'm going to take a number two or four. I'll start with, I don't know, I'm just going to do like a peachy color. I think I did a bunch of different colors. Took a bit of a peachy color, which is like pink and a touch of yellow with white. It turns a bit peachy. Without white, it looks a bit like coral. You can do whatever you please. You can kind of make it look like a wine bottle. So you just go in, give it sort of this rounded rectangle look. Maybe, maybe go to a smaller one and then just do thin neck. And then just a little line at the top, give it a bit of a spout. Okay. Come back to that in a minute. I did another one, sort of gold. I'll just show you a little bit of gold if, you, if you're interested. So I'm just going to grab, here it is, I have gold. Not washing this off because I'm kind of curious what the gold does with this color. Probably just adds a bit more of a fun color. So again, this one. Just a much wider neck at the top.
All right, then I'm going to do some purple. Uh, okay, just take the purple that I used before, maybe a touch more blue, just for a different type of purple, more indigo. Maybe a touch more blue. Like a bluey purple. This one was a fun bottle. I did it sort of roundish. So I'm going back to my first one. I'm going to use a bit of purple. I'm adding some more red to it. It's not too blue because blue and orange not the best of friends when you're mixing. So you can go back to a bit of a lavender color like what I did here. And I'm streaking in some color just to make it look, I don't know, maybe slightly magical, whimsical, uh, just colorful maybe. Purple and orange are good color. I'm going to add in some white, so I didn't wash it off. I'm just going to take more white, put a couple streaks in here. Maybe what I'll do is I'll add more pink, so red and white. So I haven't even washed my brush, I'm just streaking in some color. Or just straight red. And I will go back to my, I'm going to take a bit of black. Little line at the top. This gives it a slight bit more definition on more of the edges and the edge parts of the bottle. I don't think you need your finger to smudge things. Give it a bit more of a blended smudgy look. So going back to the other purpley one, since it's similar, probably just a bit of black to give it more of that outline. And if you want to add that, something like a cork in it. I'm just going to take a bit of white again. Give it more of a glare. So I'm staying within the lines. I'm not going outside on the black. And I'm just going to smudge it. And like I said, pure white will give it a super shine. So if you want to super shine anywhere, and the light is really hitting it. Or we can add in some gold. Maybe it's picking up the gold from the bottle next to it. Same with my gold bottle. Maybe it's picking up a little bit of purple. And we'll go to just some black outline, 
some of the edges. It gives it more definition and shape. Um, a fun little tip as well, just for gold, adding hints of brown. There we go. And hints of brown just make it look a little less super shiny, fresh, and new. Which is also a good color for any corks. A couple dabs in there. Here we go. Take a little bit of white to give it a shine. Kind of in the middle. And I'll leave that. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave that. Okay, so something else that I've added is I put a little bit of a safety box, lock box, something sort of mysterious. I am starting with, okay, so what I did is I started with a dark blue. Blue, kind of like a gray blue. Blue, touch of black. Small touch of white, so it's a dark gray blue. Okay. And I did a small rectangle at the bottom. So this is the bottom part. Right there. I take white to add it. I don't wash it off, I just use the lighter part. So I'm just adding a bit of white in the top part. Just get across. And you can go back to your dark blue just to touch up anything on the bottom. I also just use a bit of this to give it some shadowing along the sides. So I go around the edges, let it pick it up, go a bit darker. Oop, a lot of black. Going this top part with that dark gray blue, give it some of that streak so it's not too light compared to the bottom, but it's just a bit more highlighted. And you can also take a bit of gold and just keep, keep picking up thick layers of black. I'm just going to outline that while I can then. A little bit of gold, some shimmer. And I'm taking black again. So if you've done your outline, so just go a little bit around, just make sure that, especially in the middle where it's supposed to open, so right close to the bottom between those two colors. Then 
I make this circle. I kind of just dot it around because it's wet. So I just give it a little of a dotted look. So it looks like it's really chiseled in there. And so a very abstract line through the middle to represent a keyhole. Any touch ups could be with blue and black. Yep, something fun and mysterious added there. And then I'm going to add my cup. Yeah, I'm going to add the cup, put all these flowers all around it. And honestly, these flowers didn't take me any time at all. I kind of just put whatever, <laughs> whatever I wanted. So this is where you can do small little touch-ups too. So since you, you haven't gone back to the top, you go back to some super dark brown, for example. You can add in some extra bits of color in some of your books. I think brown is a great added color to really add more interest into the spine of the book, give it extra shadow along the edges. And just not as much color focused on each book. So this is just a little bit of white. And go back into the middles. Give it a highlight. And for my cup, I like teal. I actually um, have a teal cup, so it's just, it's comforting. So you can do any color, of course. Blue, touch of yellow, maybe a tiny dot of black, so maybe you don't want it standing out too much or too bright. I'm just going to start with a nice, rounded U shape. Square that off. The line across the top, fill it in. I actually have a rounded teal cup, and it says "Best Mom." <laughs> okay, little we'll handle. There you go. I don't wash it off, I take a little bit of black. So sometimes that's the, just, just the key for a lot of things is you don't need to wash off the brush when you just take a bit of black on your existing color. It just kind of picks up that color and just goes to a grayish version of that. See, it's not just fully black. More part of this handle, maybe a little bit on the other part. Go back to I'm picking up a bit of teal again. I don't want it to be as black. Just I just let some of the black and the teal mix as I sort of fill it in, and it still shows a lot of that teal. I'll take white, so just a little dip of white, and let that shine. 
and just use your finger to smooch things out. There we go. There's shine. Okay, now, flowers, yes. For the most part, I used a smaller number four round brush, or it could be also a detailed brush. Um, I'm a huge fan of like lavender and even the lilac. So lots of purpley stuff. I'm going to go back to purple. So red, touch of blue, and white. A little bit of white so it looks like a lavender color. Um, okay, I'll start just anywhere. I have, I just do these dotted things. Dotted like that, add a bit more white. Maybe do another one. Go a little bit wider towards the bottom, so it's that sort of like a cone shape. You can even add different purples, so I can go back to my darker purple, add some in there, or bluey purple, to add more texture and depth to it. And we'll add a bit more blue and some white. And do this side. So just don't really force anything, just do what you can sort of fit. Here, I'll touch more red and white to it. So it's not as bluey, it just goes a bit more purple or pinkish. And I do, there's a lot of these things I call fillers. So when you have nothing else to do, I just like do little flicks, like it represents flowers and petals and stuff and all that sort of thing. So right here. Just keep going until I fill a lot of the space. I'm going to add in a bit of greenery and then I'm going to add more flowers um, so that it's basically the same green as this. Touch of brown added. Maybe if you add a touch of black, it will still do pretty much the same thing. And the white. We need to add a little bit of white, otherwise, you don't see it on top of the black. A touch of black. Okay. Um, you can make 
I like to, the way that I like to do this is sometimes I do sort of like grass, a touch of water, and then you can do stuff like this, kind of flick it out, give it a bit of a grass stem sort of look. Mm -hmm. Stems looking like they're going to and from those flowers, maybe down here, or anything in between. So for example, at the bottom, I'm doing fillers. I'm just going to do big swooshes like I did up here, but maybe a bit more extravagant. And dabs it looks a bit more greenery. It's got a lot more going on. You can always change it too. You can add a touch more yellow or blue and a touch of white if you want to change up the green a bit. Maybe up here, I'll just do some leaves going off to the side. Touch more black. Don't need to put too much attention on some of the green up here. It's like stuff behind in the shadows. I like to do little dots too. So just little dots all in a in a line. It looks a bit like a leafy stem. Some leaves here just to fill some space. There, and I, it, you don't even have to. You can leave it mostly just green and purple. I think that's an awesome combination. Uh, maybe I'll just take some purple and do some purple flowers down here. One, two, three, four, five petals. Maybe a little bit bigger. The black little center in the middle. You can take a bit of white if you want to lighten up some of that purple too. This is just dark purple, adding it to some of my lilacs here. So if you want to focus more on just like two colors around, um, you don't have to do the craziness that I did, but I kept it like, I can just add a bit more blue. So I can just do mostly blue, touch of white, touch of red, and do a couple little flowery bits up here almost like forget-me-nots. So I just did, you can do like little X's basically. Or you can do, I think it's called baby's breath. Um, white and just dot. Just in case you want to break up some color, right? Just like little touches. I think it's a great filler. And it's nothing that's going outside the color scheme. White looks good with pretty much anything. You add a couple white pieces on some of your lilac here to really pop it out a tiny bit more. Then you just pick a side so it looks like a bit of a highlight. And if you want to change up some of the green, I usually just add a touch more blue, maybe some white, give it more of a teal accent of color. And 
Actually, just a bit more blue, slightly tealish. Even just extra white. You can pick and choose some leaves to stand out more than others. It looks like they're in front. Yeah, I think I just prefer the, the purple and the green. Um, maybe I'll do like a purple tulip. Let's do that. So similar color scheme, it can be more pinkish purple. As long as it's not all the exact same purple, I think it looks nice. I'll do tulip. I don't even know where I should do a tulip. Maybe right here next to this purple flower. Purple, a little bit over top. And accent it with a bit of a darker purple maybe along the bottom. Put the side and the other side can be more highlighted. So a bit of black can go a long way just by cusping around the bottom, giving it a bit of a separation up the middle. It's kind of rounded. Black can be the answer if you need to break up some color. For example, if you want to break up between some of the flowers, so these two, you just dot around the bottoms and the edges. And it can look like you could see there's two separate things here. Even in between some of your leaves. Again, this is just black. It gives the really good illusion that there's extra shadow and separation between some of the texture and the leaves and the petals of things. This is just black on the top of the bookcase. It gives it more definition as well. So I'll do, you can stop at any point. <laughs> you can just do whatever. Um, there's a little bit of steam that I did just for fun going even through the bookcase just because I thought it was, I just liked it. So I'll do that. And then I'll put maybe a little bit of a string of pearls coming down just down here. So a little bit of extra texture. So I'm going back to any muddy green. So I'm just doing a dark green, black, hardly any white whatsoever. I'm going to have it dangle wherever, wherever. It can be in front of your books, it can be in between. 
one is just kind of dangling right here. Just so it's like almost like intertwining a little bit. Bottom. And add in some white. I'm just dotting. I'm just following it and dotting around. I will take some more yellow and white. I feel like I'm lacking some of that too. Black and also at the bottoms gives it extra shadow. I'm just letting the paint sit. I'm just letting the texture really sit in with it. I haven't blended anything for that. And on this one, I'm doing a little bit of the highlight, so it looks like it's kind of separated into two, a smidge there. Here, and then there's one there, and then there's the top. Super textured. All right, so that was an idea. Maybe next to the baby stuff, I'll just do another little purpley bluey flower. I like to just, sometimes I'll just blob it in. If I'm not really sure what I want to do, I just do a blob. And put maybe a black center. Yeah, it looks a bit more flowery. I'm going to put it down on the side. So for that, a bit of steam coming up from the cup, watery white, so very little white. I just kind of lightly coat and let, and just pick up a bit of water. So it's, if it's too much white, it will just be pure white. But if it's watery white and it dries, it dries very transparent. So you can still see a lot through it. So if you want to go above and beyond and add more white to bring out some shines in certain areas, that's something to do afterwards. It's really hard to stop. I think that's it for, for me. Sign your painting whenever. We love to see results. Go to our Facebook page. I thought this was more of just a fun little hobby thing to do more than just, you know, just to paint something different. More to your hobbies and to your like.
and maybe go paint on with me again soon. So yeah, check out our Facebook page, Artist Palette Durham. You can see what's coming up as well on uh, for free or paid and uh, artistpalettederm.com. You can see all of our coming events there too. Thank you guys. Enjoy.